So let's talk about process workflow. What do we want to do in process workflow? Well, generally, what does it mean to do workflow? What it means to do workflow is that you want to take a particular a set of things effectively and move it along a stepwise process effectively. So as an example, if you have an expense report, it needs to be, of course, the first step is filled out by, the, by, uh, by uh, an employee. Then it probably goes to the manager uh, for approval. Uh, if it, uh, there is a certain dollar amount, maybe it needs to go to the manager's manager for approval if it, if it is at a higher level. And then eventually it goes to accounting to get paid, and eventually it gets marked as paid uh, once uh, once that has occurred, and you know maybe after the payment has been uh, recorded by the bank, it uh, then basically uh, is uh, is cleared and, and settled. That's an example of a workflow. Well, in most of these cases, the purpose that of what you want to implement in RSP Designer is basically to either change the state of something or set a new value of something essentially, uh, and make it easy for the user. Uh, to make that change. So how can we do that effectively? What is the way that we can accomplish uh, that? Well, what, uh, here is an example, a simple example, where what we want to do is show you how to flip the discontinued, discontinued state of a product uh, by essentially using you know, two buttons, essentially selecting a few records uh, and then clicking the mark as discontinued or unmark as discontinued. So I mean, the, hopefully this will give you an idea that you can essentially do this for any kind of workflow that you have in your environment. So this is just to give you a, a generic example that you can then essentially take it and benefit uh, from that. So what will happen is the first step is the user will select. This is our goal. The first step is the user will select one or more rows. They will then click one of the buttons that we have added. And I just put M and U, or you can put anything you want there. And then the third step is that essentially the discontinued flag changes uh, in there. So imagine, for an example, an expense report. You mark a few things, and you mark those as approved. Uh, same kind of idea, same kind of concept that we want to accomplish here. What's our strategy here in order to do this code customization? Our strategy is twofold. The first set of things is layout customization, and the second is code customization. What are the layout customizations? We want to be able to add a couple of buttons, the mark and the unmark buttons in this case. We want to essentially you know, specify the page properties to specify the button text and any bindings that we need to do. And then code. And what we need to do is you know, change the click handlers for both of these buttons in order to essentially retrieve all of the selected rows and then change essentially the, the status of the flag and then save it into the database. That's our strategy, two-step process, uh, add the layout buttons, and then um, essentially do the, the click handlers for both functions effectively. How are we going to do that? Again, back to our spreadsheet layout design mode. The goal is effectively, again, uh, you know, go to the button section effectively. So when you're looking at um, the application, let me go back to the browser over here. We want to essentially add two more buttons uh, over here someplace. We could either add them as image buttons or just as regular buttons. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick uh, something over here for, uh, for one of those buttons. And then what we want to do basically is insert a couple of buttons. And we can do that in the spreadsheet layout very easily by simply inserting some columns after the reset button. And then what we want to do effectively is then drag and drop uh, some buttons from the, the toolbox. Now, we can either put an image button or just a regular button. So it's up to us, essentially, a themed uh, button. Your code will be slightly different if it's, you use an image button or a themed button, only because you are casting it uh, to one. Uh, and then in, uh, once you have dragged and dropped, it gives you a standard name, like an image button or something like that. And you may rename it to mark as discontinued and unmark as discontinued. And then once uh, that's basically. Uh, the, the first part of the first step. And then finally, what you will do is you will specify any properties. If you use an image button, you will specify the, the, uh, okay. So, uh, so um, what you can, what you can do is, So uh, what uh, what we can do is set the properties, and 
uh, here. So if for an image button, you specify the image URL and any tooltip thing. And then what you want to do is set the button binding to custom and to stay on the same page, because we're not. Uh, all we want to do is refresh the page. We don't want to go to another page. So let's go ahead and do that. In this particular case, I'm going to see. I'm going to go back to the show table page, drop down this hierarchy, and go to the button section. This is the button section at the top of the, the table panel, not in the individual rows. So I'll go ahead and select products button. There's the new button, the edit button, the copy button, and so on. As I scroll to the right. I will notice that there is a reset button, and then I have uh, you know, the pagination control that is showing up over here. I'm going to right mouse click and insert two columns to the right of the reset button. Okay? Actually, let me, uh, le yeah, I'm going to do this actually uh, after this one. I'm, I'm going to use a theme button instead of an Im image button. So I'll do this in between. So the buttons are going to look slightly different. So I'm going to insert two columns to the right of this thing and one more column to the right of this thing. So now I've got two columns effectively. Notice that there is a green arrow, uh, thing up at the upper uh, left corner of this uh, O1 cell. All that means is that there is some uh, essentially control or some uh, information over there. It's not an empty cell. Uh, and essentially what this is doing is it is putting the, the right uh, edge of the button bar. So if you go back and look at this thing, notice that there is a, a rounded uh, edge of this thing. So that's all uh, that cell contains effectively. So what we want to do is we want to put something in between the button bar and the pagination. So I'm going to use, I've created two uh, empty cells over here. I'm going to go to the gen section and I'm going to dra drag and drop. Unlike the, 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 the PowerPoint presentation, I'm, in this case instead of using an image button, I'm going to use a team button. I'm going to drag and drop two buttons over here. I'm going to right mouse click each one of the buttons and then rename it. The first one I'm going to call is Mark Discontinued. And the second one I'm going to rename it to Unmark Discontinued. OK, so I've done uh, both of these. I'm going to double click on each one of them. And I'm going to set some things over here. For example, I'm going to change as put the button text as Mark and put a tooltip like uh, you know, set uh, this uh, con this continued flag on selected products. Okay, I'm going to switch over to the bindings as I mentioned to you. I'm going to set this as custom and stay on current page. Press the OK button, and I'll repeat this thing for the unmark. And so I'm going to say unmark, and then tooltip is unmark or set. Uh, uh, unset uh, discontinued flag for selected products. OK, same thing. Go to the bindings, select it as custom, stay on current page, press the OK button. So I'm done now with the layout portion of my, um, uh, my um, code customization. So let me go back to my PowerPoint here, just tell you. So what I've done is I've done add the marked and unmarked button, set the page properties to specify button text and bindings. Now I need to do the code portion of it, which is I need to first build and then do the click handlers for both the buttons. So I'll switch back to RHP Designer. The reason I need to build is because it'll automatically generate for me the click handlers uh, at that point in time. So now I go back to the buttons area, and I select Mark Discontinued. Look at the cell editor. There's a click handler that is generated for me. Now, obviously, because I selected it as a custom function, only a shell click handler is generated for me. It doesn't really do anything. There's an empty try catch block over here. And then, essentially, it returns uh, if there's an error on the catch. And that's all it's doing. Same thing with the unmark. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to essentially um, uh, cut and paste from my uh, cheat sheet very quickly over here the mark and the unmark over here. So I'll go to filter by URL, and then, oh, sorry, wrong one. Oh, the process workflow, that's what I need. I'm sorry. OK, so I've got uh, mark discontinued over here. I'm going to highlight this, copy and paste. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll walk you through the, each one of these functions here uh, in a minute. So I'm going to take the mark, paste it over here. And let's, let's go through each one of these functions. And again, the click handler uh, tab is, is, uh, is displayed 
um, in a different color indicating what's there. I'm going to click this expand button over here to maximize it so I can focus on the entire code over here rather than looking at the spreadsheet uh, grid here. And let's see, I'll just adjust the tabbing over here just so that we are, uh, we can see what's going on. Let me get a sip of water. Okay, so what, what we're trying to do in this click handler is obviously uh, the user will select one or more rows. And what we want to do is go through each one of the selected rows. And what we want to do is modify those uh, rows, the discontinued flag on those rows, to effectively uh, set uh, that based on uh, what the purpose of the button is. In this case, I'm focusing only on the mark button at this point in time. And the mark button effectively, so what we do here is, first of all, anytime I'm using database operations, I need to start transaction, commit transaction, end transaction in the finally. So that's kind of your standard, essentially, thing that you want to do. You want to be able to start, end, and commit, basically. And the commit is only needed if you are modifying the record. You don't need the commit. And you always should put this in a try-catch block so that you know exactly what's, what's going on effectively. Then what I need to do is I need to then go through all of the selected record controls. Okay, So what I'm doing here is basically saying, hey, listen, what I want to do is get me a list of all of the selected record controls. This means that any time the user has clicked on any of the rows. Let me go back and reset these filters. So I'm looking at all of the, it's taking a little bit longer because I've made some changes in the application. So it's trying to rebuild this thing. It may give me an, OK, there you go. OK, notice that I have a mark and an unmark showing up over here. But of course, I haven't implemented this completely over here. So if I switch, uh, select these three rows, Chang, uh, Chef Anton, and Chef Anton's gumbo mix, uh, then obviously you want to operate. Now, from a, from a display perspective, these mark and unmark don't look very pretty. But ignore that for a second. You can always uh, you know, make that pretty uh, as, as much as you want. So what we want to be able to do is flip these discontinued flags only for these three rows. So going back to my code customization, I want to get all of the selected record controls. Then when I get the selected record controls, keep in mind that the record controls are the user interface controls. Those are the lines that are essentially displayed on the web page. What I want to do is then essentially retrieve the underlying database record for that product, and then essentially flip the discontinued flag and then save that. So what do I do here? The way that I do it is essentially I call the get record function on the product table. And I pass the unique ID for the product. And that's available for, to me on the record control. So I simply say rc.recordUniqueID. I pass true as a second parameter, which indicates that I intend to modify this record. If I say false, that means that I have no intention of modifying this record, so it gives me a read-only record from the database. In this case, I intend to modify it. So that's why it's a mutable flag. It says true. And I get a new record. I do my proper error checking to make sure that I really got a record. Because you know what could have happened is, while, while I'm viewing the page, somebody else could have gone in and deleted that product uh, underneath me, essentially pulled the rug from underneath me. So I want to make sure that, hey, I really got a record based on that unique ID. And then I flip the discontinued, I set the discontinued flag to true over here. Uh, and then essentially do the save. That's all there is to it. We get all of the selected record controls. We read the underlying database record by using the get record call. We uh, change the discontinued flag and then save. And then finally, what I want to do is I want to call uh, set me that data changed equal to true. What the me that data changed uh, equal to true does is it basically makes sure that the data on the page is going to be refreshed effectively. So I don't have to go through and reload the data by myself. I just set the data change flag, and then the generated code in other places takes care of that thing, basically. What effectively happens is in the pre-render, we check whether data change is set to true. And if it is, we reload the data. So that way, you know, all of the functions effectively all they have to do is set the data change equal to true, and then the underlying generated code takes care of reloading the data all over, uh, all over again. So that's all there is to it for my click handler. I need to do, of course, the same thing to the unmark as discontinued. 
And in the case of the unmark as discontinued, I will go through and copy the, actually it's the same code. And the only difference is that I need to go back and change the discontinued flag to false, effectively. So it's no longer discontinued. So that's, it's the same thing, or oh, actually, I'm sorry, I should have made this unmark discontinued. So I call, I'm calling the same function effectively because I copied and pasted the whole thing here. So there you have it. That's all I need to do effectively over here. Now I can go through and so in both cases I've made the changes over here, mark discontinued and unmarked discontinued. I'm simply going to press the run button over here and it's open up, going to open up another browser for me and show me uh, all of the, all of the uh, uh, sh show me the screen over here with the mark and the unmark button. So let's take, for example, uh, uh, you know, take this, um, do the simple thing. Check all of these things, all uh, 10 of these, and mark them as discontinued. Notice that two of them are marked as yes over here. If I press the mark button, what should happen is everything should be flipped as discontinued over here. Now I select Annecy, Chef Anton, Grandma, and say unmark and only those three are unmarked as discontinued. And because it's all Ajax, it's all, um, you know, it does not, uh, you know, it's, there's no flickering, uh, it just gets refreshed uh, very, very uh, fast and shows you how that is accomplished. 